so hello all my name is prabjot singh so uh, today we are going to discuss about the last minute tips of uh, tis tisnet is basically an examination uh, conducted by the tis institute that is tata institute of social science so let's talk about the gk of tis so tis gk consists of 40 questions each so one mark carrying total 40 marks and there is no negative marking and there is no sectional cut off basically there is no sectional cut off but as i already told you for if you need to get uh, you get into the merit so because obviously after the interview is the marks from your written examination is also considered so uh, for the sectional cut off if you are scoring 30 to 32 plus then i would say you are performing very well your gk is very good if you are performing 25 to 30 i would say 22 to 30 then yes your chances are pretty good but that should, that also depends on how you perform in your quant and how you perform in your verbal but if you are scoring less than but if you are scoring less than 20 your selection is tough your selection is tough right so for that we need to focus a bit on uh, gk section and quant and verbal section consists of 60 question that is 60% of paper carrying one mark each again so the things that we need to focus on gk in this uh, you know in this last week so first of all current affairs and important news usually student ask me uh, what are the topics that we need to focus on focus in this last week i personally say is that for the current affairs section for the sake of current current affairs what do you need to do just focus on current affairs of last 4 to 6 months last is 4 to 6 months what do you mean by 4 to 6 months for example your examination is on february i would suggest you uh, starting from mid of feb right mid of feb se piche ki taraf chale jao go go backward so starting from october october november december january and mid of feb if you prepare very well if you prepare this last 4 months very well then i would say just go two months again uh, prepare the two months back uh, current affairs so that's why current affairs are, current affairs is comparatively a very easy easy topic to cover comparatively is very uh, you know uh, if we if we talk about static 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 portion is you know very huge it is difficult for us to complete in even this uh, uh, you know just three or four days and let me tell you how much current affairs usually comes in 2019 Sixteen question comes of current affairs, and in twenty twenty, twenty question comes from this current affairs section. So it's round about forty five to fifty percent of the exam basically consists of current affairs. So that's why it's easy for you to get good marks in current affairs. It's easy for you to compile those current affairs. And let me tell you what are the topics that you need to focus in current affairs. So for current affairs. the topics that you need to focus like people in news awards the latest awards and honors sports international international means any new prime minister or any new president who is elected uh, you know uh, who is elected there international government schemes the new government schemes right the new government scheme and miscellaneous miscellaneous may include like uh, uh, recently which intercellular intercellular civilization site uh, declared under unesco world heritage site it is uh, that the site in uh, gujarat that is dhola vira dhola vira is a site who is this, who, which, which has declared on the unesco world heritage site so that's a current affair news on art and culture so this kind of a question that they may ask you next one is global organizations grouping and uh, economic uh, institutions this global organization grouping and economic institutions means like you must have heard of sarc you must have heard of asia you must have heard of bimstec so you need to focus on these and what are the things that you need to do and this are international organizations and all in all of these topic 
you need to under, you need to you know understand two things over here one is the static portion other one is the current portion in the case of static portion you should know where the headquarter is first thing secondly date of formation right and the third is members how many members are there so especially you should focus on those issue or you should focus on those organizations where india is a member right the organization where india has no role there is no need to you know uh, study about that so the organization which are very much in news since last 4 or 6 months and where india took active part and uh, it's very important for you it's very very important for you right it's all about economic organization grouping as well as the economic institutions as well you must have heard of imf world bank right uh, these organizations are very much important next one is important awards and honors again static and current static means uh, they must they they must they may ask you that uh, uh, who was the first recipient of bharat ratan they must they may ask you who was the first recipient of uh, highest sports award initially it was called as rajiv gandhi khel ratan award but now the name has changed to major dhyan chand award so who was the first recipient of highest sports award in india that's a static one but for the current one they may ask you who is the uh, latest recipient next one is sports important tournaments cups players and their uh, autobiographies important terms used in sports and current sports news now uh, this 2020 uh, 2021 tokyo olympic was and tokyo olympic was uh, one of the very important event for india because india won highest number of medals in any olympics till today and uh, uh, neeraj chopra has also won the gold medal so they may ask you question because we have we got seven you know olympic medalist so we should know about these seven olympic medalist and not only this olympic medalist you should also focus on para olympics para olympics so para olympics uh, uh, is also a very good uh, you know uh, chances to come in uh, to to play a very big role in your exam in your sports section uh this sport is basically uh for the uh, for the specially challenged people so they may ask you about the important cups they may ask you about the important tournaments like for example they they ask you about the uh durand cup is related to which sport azlan shah cup is related, related to which sport so they are, can ask you question from this also next one is sobri cutes place and person places and person like for example you must have heard about pink city so which city is known as pink city we all know we studied since 6th standard or 8th standard so this pink city is known as jaipur jaipur is known as pink city so what is it pink city pink city is sobri cute right so that's a place sobri cute of a place a sobri cute of persons uh, you know also uh, you know they may ask you from that from that, that point of view then countries capitals and currencies तो ये तो मैं इसमें नहीं जाऊंगा यू शुड नो अबाउट द एटलीस्ट द नेबरिंग कंट्रीज ऑफ इंडिया द कैपिटल एंड द करेंसीज विच दे यूजली यूज एंड द अदर इंपॉर्टेंट कंट्रीज विच आर इन वेरी मच न्यूज नाउ डेज सो दीज आर द थिंग्स दैट यू नीड टू फोकस इन दिस लास्ट मिनट सो लेट्स गो फर्दर सो थिंग्स टू फोकस ऑन टेस्ट नेट again the last one is they may ask you in the business uh, business gk as well they say the latest acquisitions and mergers important and latest ceos and leaders of business groups parent companies and their co brand like for example land rover and uh, jaguar is a co brand of which company it is under tata tata is a big umbrella tata is a conglomerate and uh, this land land rover uh, this um, jaguar they they comes into it right they they are the co brand of uh, uh, this parent company so next one is i also put some previous year questions for your uh, real time assessment like the where is the following match the following one side there will be an organization on other side there will be an headquarters so where is the headquarter of world bank so headquarter of world bank you will find it in where we all know about this washington dc so that's a so next one is is a north atlantic city nato is in very much in news nowadays because the uh, russian ukraine conflict is going on and i would request you all please go through that issue because it is very much in news it is very important i am expecting 99% that i am expecting the question on this particular issue they may ask you on a geographical perspective they ask may ask you any 
historical treaty and all. So, NATO, NATO formed in 1949, that is a North Atlantic Treaty Organization, it is a military alliance led by United States of America and where is the headquarters, headquarters in Bruce, Brussels, Brussels is what, Brussels is the capital of Belgium, right. Now, next is Amnesty International, Amnesty International is again an organization uh, for this human rights and all, so you will find in London, see. Next one is Food and Agriculture Organization, its headquarters in Rome. European Central Bank, its headquarters in Frankfurt. And where the Frankfurt is, it's in Germany. Then is Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, it's in Paris. We all know where Paris is. Paris is in France. So, next one is which of the following countries is not a member of European Union? So, European Union is an uh, you know uh, organization it's a military become economic organization which was founded in 1998-99 by the treaty called as Maastricht Treaty Maastricht Treaty initially there were total 28 members but now there are 27 members because after Britain exit so Brexit after Brexit now there are 28 27 members initially there were 28 members so, which of the following country is not a member of uh, United, European Union? This is Norway is not the member of European Union, right? Rest other are the member of European Union. Next one is so important awards like I already told you about the Bharat Ratan. Bharat Ratan is the highest civilian award in India after Bharat Ratan. It's a Padma Vibhushan, then it's Padma Bhushan, then it's Padma Shri. So, this is the order of award uh, in India. So, Bharatan first time awarded in 1954, right. So, they may ask you who was the first recipient and uh, about the gallantry award. There were two types of gallantry award, war time and peace time. So, war time and peace time, there are two types of gallantry award uh, basically given in armed forces and all. So, uh, who perform an exceptional duty on the line of control and in the line of duty. And there are other literary awards which include Janan Pid, Saraswati Samman, Booker Prize, Nobel Prize for Literature and uh, they may ask you about the first recipient and the uh, latest recipient, the last recipient. Then there are film awards like uh, uh, yesterday only the national film award for the, in the best film category is given to Sardar Udham Singh, right. So like the, these kind of a question they, you, they may ask you and is international award like Oscars, Nobel, Nobel Prize is very important, I, I, I am again each year direct or indirect question from Nobel Prize usually come in this paper, you, you just you can check check it on the last five years of question paper, Indira Gandhi Peace Prize and uh, Pulitzer Prize, Raman Magasese Award, this Raman Magasese Award is also called as Nobel Prize of Asia, so this award is given to those people who perform an exceptional duty in the field of public service and all. So, about these things, they usually ask. Next one is, so uh, this again the previous year question, who is the last president as of now to receive Bharat Ratan award? So, you can use a method of elimination. First of all, Atavari Vajpayee was not, was never been a president of India. So, he is out of, uh, the, uh, out of the option. There is Prathiva Devi, Pat Devi Patel, she is also not a winner of Bharat Ratan. Madan Mohan Malviya ji and Pranam Mukherjee, they all are win they all receives uh, this Bharat Ratan, but Madan Mohan Malviya was never been a president of India. So, he is also not in option. So, the right answer is Pranam Mukherjee. So, Pranam Mukherjee is the correct one. Next one. So, sports, so special focus on current tournaments and winners especially those in uh, those in which Indians participated and important cups and terms and important sports personality which are in news, right. So, you just read about the sports section of Hitbull's eye snippets, so it will definitely help you in that. So, like these match the trophies and cups associated with these sports like badminton. So, badminton is the BWAF Championship that is Badminton World Federation, then is Hockey, Ranga Swami Cup is of Hockey, Table Tennis is Bama Bab League and Football is of Durand Cup. 
फुटबॉल इज ड्यूरेंट कप इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन द फील्ड ऑफ फुटबॉल संतोषी का दिस ड्यूरेंट कप दिस सुप्रोतो कप एंड ऑल दीज आर ऑल कप्स रिलेटेड टू फुटबॉल बॉयज मस्ट हैव नोन अबाउट दीज बॉयज आर वेरी वेरी बिग फैंस ऑफ दिस फुटबॉल एंड ऑल नेक्स्ट वन इज Q Q is a sports that, that that's a question on sports terms and terminologies. Q is a uh, Q is a sports term associated with which sport? So Q is a sport term which is associated with uh, billiards. Q and pot. This is a very common term used there. Then in 2028, Olympics will be held in which city? So 2021, you know, like it's 2020. It is in Tokyo. 2024, it is in Paris. And in 2028, it is in Los Angeles. So the right option is A, that is Los Angeles. And in 2032, it has already decided it is in Australia. I think it's Melbourne, but it is in Australia for sure. Next one is. So there are some previous year questions uh, which I also put so to get so, so that you get some real time scenario. What type of actual question comes? so which of the following uh, now there are few questions basically based on static one like uh, which of the following objective is not embodied in the preamble so what is basically preamble preamble is nothing just a, like a preface like there is a preface of any novel in the same way there is a preface of a constitution of india so that's a preamble so uh, preamble Uh, provides you a uh, preamble tells you what i what what our constitution will provide to citizen of our country of this country so usa was the first country to have the preamble and what are the things that is not included in this preamble that's a question so liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship this is a line embodied in preamble so thought is there belief is there expression is there but movement is not there so right answer is b b right liberty of movement is not there so what is liberty liberty of thought liberty of expression liberty of faith and liberty of worship this is included in the preamble so next is the red cliff committee was appointed so uh, what was the purpose of red cliff committee so you know the line between india and pakistan is known as what the line between india and pakistan is known as red cliff line so line between india and pakistan is known as red cliff line so the red cliff committee was appointed that is to draw boundary between india and pakistan so the right answer is a then is who in india has the power to summon or prorogue either house of the uh, of the parliament so summon means to sorry so basically summon means to call a session right and prorogue means to end a session so there are basically three types of a sessions right so there are basically three types of a sessions what are these three types of a session that is budget monsoon and winter budget monsoon and winter there are three types of a session so if government needs to be operative in lok sabha so they have they, they at least they has to you know have two sessions at least in a year so if the government fails to do that so lok sabha will automatically get dissolved and uh, there will be no government and government has to resign and the maximum gap should be of 6 months and uh, who has the power to call a call a session and to end a session that is only a president president has only the power to call or end the session next one is let's go to the next question so which is a regenerative organ in human body so which automatically regenerates that is a liver is the only body when we cut it out so it can regenerate itself that's a liver and dance from kathakali dance kathakali aayega is from the state of dance kathakali is from kerala it's a similar dance called as kathak it's a up it's a classical dance there are eight classical dances so kathak is from up you must have known pandit birju maharaj who recently passed away at the age of 82 and he he was also padma padma bhushan award winner and this uh, this uh, uh, kathak the very big proponent of kathak in india was pandit birju maharaj who recently had passed away so they may ask you question pandit birju maharaj is associated in which field who recently passed away then next one is rollet act also known as black bill so rollet act in hindi mein i used to say 
no appeal, no vakil, no dalil. So anyone can put behind the bars without any trials. This act was passed in which year? This act was passed in 1999. So the result of this act was what? Jalliyawala Bag. And what was the result of Jalliyawala Bag? It was non-cooperation movement. The non-cooperation movement was launched by Mahatma Gandhi in oppose, to oppose Jalliyawala Bag incident. And uh, what is, uh, sorry again, so what does this non-cooperation movement leads to? It leads to Chauri Chaura incident and Chauri Chaura incident 1922, it leads to end of non-cooperation movement. So this was the, uh, the chronology of that. So, uh, so Vishakha judgment is a set of guidelines, it is a very important case, it is a set of guidelines to deal with which case? It is basically sexual harassment. Vishakha judgment. Now, who among the following was known as Frontier Gandhi? That's a question based on sobriquets. I already told you, know, like Pink City Wala. So, sobri, uh, it's a question on uh, sobriquet of a person. That is, a Frontier Gandhi is known as Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan. He is known as Frontier Gandhi. The poverty and non-British rule in India was written by. So, it is the first attempt by Indian to write a book on uh, how the Britishers are exploiting Indians econ Indian economy. So, this book was written by Dada Bhai Naroji. Then is dash is the permit that allow, which allows country to produce a certain amount of carbon credit. It is called as uh, sorry uh, carbon emission. I have answered. I have told you. basically carbon credit. Answer is A. So operation flood is 1970 was related to what? So operation flood is related to dairy development. So you must have seen white revolution. So white revolution is a revolution for the dairy products and all. And who is known as Vagro white revolution? That is Doctor. Varghis Kuran. Dr. Varghis Kuran is known as father of white revolution in India. So, next one is which indicator is are used by International Food Policy Research Institute to compute global hunger index. So, these are undernourishment, yes, it is totally true. Then, is child stunting is totally true and child mortality is totally true. So, the right answer is all of the above. So, that is a very good question, to consider the following statement and indicate which of these are correct. So, sex is a biological concept, gender is a social construct. So, whether this statement is true or not, yes, sex is a biological concept, right. So, no one has any control that who will be boy or the, the child, whether the before the before the birth of the child, whether it is just a boy or a girl, no one has any control. So, that is a natural process and it is a biological concept. And gender is a social construct as well. Yes, it is a social construct. So, this option is true. Sex is a natural or biological feature. This portion is correct. Gender is a cultural or learned feature. Yes, this is also correct. Why? Because it is a what is the culture of India like uh, marriage to uh, marriage of men and women. This is a, this is a cultural, cultural thing. So, that is why we can see we can we can say, say that gender is a cultural you know feature. So, both that is 1 and 2. Third option, we can not interchange it, that is not, uh, that we can interchange. The second option has a different meaning and the first one has different meaning, but both statements are correct. So, which international body benchmarks country on the global gender gap, global gender gap index, that is World Economic Forum. So, a law, sex ratio in a particular place can indicate what? So, uh, Practice of significant sex selective feticide, yes. So, it will reduce uh, the, uh, you know, when the female feticide will be there. So, it will vary the child sex ratio in that particular area. High male immigration, yes, this is also correct when in particular area, there is a high influx of male population there. So, high male immigration is will be there and both of the above, yes, the both statements are correct. So, the right answer here is C. C is the right answer here. So, th these were very important issues and these were the very important topics uh, that uh, we need to focus on uh, test net. So, this is the last, uh, you know, uh, this is the last week. I would only suggest you to, uh, you know, focus on current affairs, focus on very important issues of static. Do not try to, you know, indulge into new things, just try to revise the older one that you had already done. So, that is a wise advice from, uh, from my side and uh, it is a very good institute. I would I would suggest you uh, 
डोंट गेट अ फ्रेड फ्रॉम द एग्जाम सो अगर आप पेपर से डर जाओगे तो वो पेपर आपको दबा लेगा वो पेपर नहीं क्लियर होगा सो जस्ट इसमें अगेन माई रिकमेंडेशन टू यू जस्ट प्ले ऑन अ फ्रंट फुट पुट योर लेफ्ट लेग आउट एंड हैव ए शॉर्ट एंड लेट सी वॉट हैपन इन फ्यूचर सो वील मीट अगेन for the other upcoming examination for the discussion of upcoming examination of the particular gk section so till then i am signing off now thank you